Life Audio. Welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations, your authority in navigating the world of homeschooling diverse learners. Featuring Peggy Ployer from Sped Homeschool, Annie Yorty from AnnieYorty.com, Leilani Melendez from Living with Eve, Stephanie Buckwalter from eLARP Learning, and Don Jackson from Don Jackson Educational Consulting and Tutoring. With over 75 years of combined homeschooling expertise, experiences, and perspectives, this group is eager to share their wealth of wisdom to empower your homeschooling journey. So grab your favorite mug, settle in, and get ready for insightful discussions, valuable insights, and practical tips as these experts and their guests dive into the hottest topics in homeschooling. Whether you're a seasoned homeschooler, just considering this path, or anywhere in between, you don't want to miss a minute of these enlightening conversations that will empower your child to thrive in their homeschool environment. Empowering Homeschool Conversations is starting right now. Join us to give your homeschool the power boost it needs to successfully educate the unique learners in your home. Today, we are going to talk about thankful in trials, trusting God's work through your family struggles. And my guest today is Sharon Janes, an international speaker, best-selling author of 26 books and a powerful voice in the global faith community, formerly the vice president of Proverbs 31 Ministries and co-host of the radio program. Sharon knows the topics that are important to Christian women of all ages and all walks of life for sure. And Sharon, I am just delighted to have you on today as a guest and to be able to share with your community, our community and um, just words of encouragement, especially, and, um, and things that um, you have wisdom to, to share on. So welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I love talking with moms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my heart, when I first, I, I actually used to work for Mops International, and mm-hmm. I think my heart um, has always been for the mothers. And I think that's when I formed Sped Homeschool. At, and then we do, we help a lot of dads too, and, and grandparents as well. But my heart truly is for moms. And um, so, so yeah, so today's conversation, just really, we're going to hone in on those moms and, um, and just encouragement and times of trial. I, we all face them, don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. We do. And we're going to on this side of heaven. I mean, that's just, yeah. Jesus told us that, didn't he? In this world, you will have tribulation. And I'm so glad he exactly. said that because that way we know when it happens, we should not be surprised because we live on this side of heaven. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of people get the the impression that, you know, I'm going to accept Jesus in my life and then everything's just going to be smooth sailing from here on out. (laughs) Where did that come from? I don't know where where we got that from, but yeah, that is not the way it happens. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. But But we do have a story in. That's the good news. We still have trials, but Mm -hmm. we handle them differently and we know the outcome is going to be different. So true. So true. And such good encouragement, too, that um, we are not alone there. We're all going through different things. And um, our communities tends to share the the fact that they all are teaching at home kids who struggle or they're considering it um, mm-hmm. or maybe they've graduated a child and they're still going through those trials with adult children now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm one of those. Um, I have but, one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so it, it, it just never ends. We never get to that point until, like you said, Sharon, when, you know, heaven comes to earth, all those problems will be taken away. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a process. But we, and but we know where we go to comfort. We know where we have, we can go for wisdom. I mean, it tells us in the Bible, you ask for wisdom, he's going to give it to us. So it's yeah, not like yeah, we struggle it's... without someone there helping us all the way. Mm-hmm. We're not struggling Absolutely. alone. Mm-hmm. Yes, not not alone for sure. I think a lot of times that we do feel alone. Um, so today we're going to talk about being thankful through these trials. Um, and I always ask my guests when we first kick off, you know, wh- why does this topic resonate you, with you? Because I oftentimes when I set up an interview, I, we come up with kind of an overarching topic. And when I talked with your publicist, she had gone back and forth between the two of us, and she's like, "Yes." 
That's a good topic. <laughs> so, um, so I just kind of like to know a little bit about, um, you know, being thankful in trials. Why does that resonate with you so much? And you know, um, I, I, we're going to picky. Uh, if you think about your own life and think mm -hmm. about when you have grown the most spiritually and as a person, okay, yeah. I would, I would bet that it was during times of trial. Absolutely. And, and we need yes. to think about that with our kids too. And I know we're going to get to this later, but, but we, we pray for our kids. Sometimes we pray that they won't struggle. Um, mm -hmm. When we see them struggling, we pray that God will take care of that struggle. And yeah. I'm not sure that that's necessarily the best thing to be praying, but maybe mm -hmm. we should be praying that they will learn what they need to learn in the struggle. And um, we yeah. all know that story, the little train that could. I mean, I think, I don't know how old it was <laughs> when I read that the first time as, as, as a child. And I think as moms and, and homeschooling moms, sometimes we want to push that train um, when it's yeah. struggling and help it get over the hill. But if, mm. if we do try to fix that, then they're not going to go down that hill saying, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. So we yeah, pray so and I pray for myself when I'm going through struggles. You know, Lord, show me what I need to learn here. Show me what I need, what, what I need to take away from this. And, and Peggy, I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. That is not usually my first reaction. <laughs> Mine first neither. Reaction. I, I, yeah. just wanna, I just want to say that right above board. So don't feel guilty. It's like, ooh, I don't, that's not my first thought. It's not mine yeah. either. But after mm -hmm. I calm down and I stop pouting about it, and then I know God is in control. God is in control. Absolutely. I'm not. And where here's something we can remember where we see trouble, God sees training. So oh, we're going beautiful. through trouble. God, what is it that you're you're teaching me? What are you training me? And mm. we see we see a set back, he sees a set up. So mm. through difficulties, I mean we just we can look through the Bible and see people that had difficulties and what they learned mm -hmm. through that. Mm. And we can apply it to ourselves. Um, but again, if it's not your first reaction, don't feel bad about it. You know, I think about um, Joseph in the Bible. Wow. How many struggles did he have? Remember Joseph? He was the, the favorite yeah. son and he yep. loved Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he had many colors and um, he was the favorite he might as well yeah. have had his favorite monogrammed on his coat, right? And then <laughs> he had these dreams that one day his brothers and his parents, he had two dreams, that they were going to bow down to him. And instead of keeping that to himself, remember he shared that with oh, his yeah. brother and they hated uh -huh. him even more, even more. Right. And so we know what happened that one day when he was around 17, the brothers were working Joseph was at home, which is a big red flag to me. Why wasn't he working too? But anyway, right. his so, father yeah. told him to go check on him. And they said, here comes that dreamer. And so mm -hmm. they they put him in a cistern, tore up his coat, put blood on it, and then a caravan. And listen, I love where it says, meanwhile, a caravan was coming, a slave caravan. And I want us right. to always remember when we are going through a struggle, Peggy, God yeah. is always working behind the scenes. Yes. God is always working yeah. in our meanwhile. And Jesus told mm -hmm. us, my father is always at work and I am working too. So, good. so when we're going through a struggle and we think God is not answering my prayer, Jesus tells mm -hmm. us differently. So we need to yeah. remember God is always working. And I love that word meanwhile. It, all mm -hmm. through the Bible, mm -hmm. we see it. What that means, like when my son was little, um, People were still allowed to play cowboy Indians. I think that's been outlawed now. So it's really not politically correct to play cowboys and Indians anymore. But he would <laughs> dress up like a cowboy. He did not have a gun. But you know what? He picked up a stick and pow, pow, pow. Um, right. But with the cowboys in the old cowboy movies, the black and whites, which you cannot even remember. But um, I remember them. And um, there was always this one line. And it said, meanwhile, do you know what comes next? Oh, back yes. At, what comes next? Mm -hmm. Back at the ranch. So right. meanwhile, uh -huh. back at the ranch. Now, what that means is something's going on over here. Something's going on over here in a different scene. And then at the end, it all comes together for an aha moment. And that's the mm -hmm. way it is with our lives. That's the way it is with our struggles. Um, that Something's going on over here that we see, 
but I promise you something's going over here that we cannot see. Yes. And at just the right moment, yes. it's going to come together and make sense. But you know what? Sometimes we never do know the why of it all. Now with mm-hmm. Joseph, going back to his story, I mean, we know that he was sold into slavery. He went to Potiphar's house and became a slave. Mm-hmm. But you know what scripture says there? It says, and the Lord was with Joseph while he yeah. was in Potiphar's house. The Lord was with Joseph. That sounds good, right? But mm-hmm. then you know what happens? Potiphar's right. wife tries to get him to sleep with her and he will not do it. And one day she grabbed his clothes. He said, no, he ran, but she was handing, still holding on to his clothes and she cried rape. But what did this, what did it say before that happened? The Lord was with Joseph, but mm-hmm. bad things still happen. So yeah. then he goes off to prison and he's in prison. And it says in scripture, and the Lord was with Joseph in prison and found mm-hmm. favor of the prison. But you've got to be kidding. I don't think he was going around singing the happy song or God is so good. (laughs) Even though this looks like a bad story, God was with Joseph. And Mm. I think that all these years, it was about 13 years he was going through this struggle. God was preparing him for what he had prepared for him. And when we're going through struggles, God is preparing us for something. It is not Mm -hmm. going to waste and we need to know that with their kids too god is preparing them for what he has prepared for them we will continue this conversation after a short break audiences are raving the carpenter is stunning what caused the oven nazareth my father sent me he's a fighter he's good too an unconventional parable as action-packed as it is faith-promoting Fighting can be lucrative here with the right connections and talent. And easy to lose your way. The Carpenter is Christian filmmaking at its finest. You can't help but cheer. You have many gifts, many talents. If you work each day to refine them, you will accomplish more with God's help than without it. And how does it feel working with Yeshua every day? He's a carpenter, son of a carpenter. You are aware of his miracles. I hear stories. No, look further. A touching account of how Jesus can change us into the best we can be. Not like anyone I've ever known, so why help me? I'm nobody. You're somebody to me. The Carpenter, now in theaters. See the full trailer at carpentermovie.com. Check out some of our recent and upcoming episodes on the Salvation Army's Words of Life podcast. On September 15th, we launched a two-part series focusing on back to school and our kids' mental health with licensed therapist David Gray. So much, but that takes away some of those other things that we may not think about, especially with younger kids, and that's that academic pressure. You know, a third grader who's not doing well in math may be sitting there thinking, I'm not good enough, and I'm never going to be good enough. And beginning October 6th, we'll spend two weeks highlighting testimonies from young adult missionaries who just returned from summer missions trips. After prayer time, I had, like, kids individually, like, come up and, like, they would ask for prayer. And, like, they told me, like, their stories and some of the struggles. Yeah, like, I even cried, like, during it because, like, these kids, it was just this connection. It was incredible. So I was truly blessed through that. To learn more about the show, visit wordsoflifepodcast.org and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. And let me say something to you, homeschool moms, too, who um, are struggling with maybe your child having a difficulty learning a certain area. Now, I was raised in a very difficult home situation. My father mm. was an alcoholic. My parents fought both physically and verbally in front of me. And I saw things mm. in the kitchen here. But I came to Christ in a miraculous way when I was 14. I'd love to share with that mm. story. But what I want to go back to is during those years of of growing up and then going off to first grade. And when back then kindergarten was not what it is today. And we, we right. colored, we took naps, we had playtime, heard a story. Right. But then first grade's when it got serious. And in first grade, mm-hmm. we had to learn how to spell. 
And that was a problem to me. You know, I thought I was going to go off to first grade and have friends. My brother was five years older than me. I thought I'm going to be smart like him. But Mm -hmm. I went off to first grade and spelling terrified me. And back then we did not, we were not hooked on phonics. Let's just say that. (laughs) We had to memorize spelling words and we had Mm flashcards and the teacher would hold up a flashcard and we had to tell what the card was. Now the teacher put our chairs, this sounds very cruel, but she put our chairs like a train and she was the engineer and she even held up a flashcard. I know she was trying to make it fun for us, right. but she held up a flashcard. And if we did not know that word, we had to go to the mm. caboose. And I spent first grade in the caboose because oh. I could not spell. And she even kept me after school with another boy. And, you know, I didn't know much, but I knew what it meant to be after school with Tommy. And I knew something's wrong with me. Mm. I cannot spell. I'm just not as smart as everybody else. Now, I want you to flash forward to the introduction before we started talking. Right. Exactly. What do I do now? <laughs> You're right. <I> right. <laughs> books that use words that yeah. I have to spell. So as you're struggling with your child in different areas, as you're teaching mm. them, God can take sometimes our most difficult struggle and turn yes. it into something wonderful. And that's what he Absolutely. did with me. Struggle spelling. I mean, I still mm-hmm. am not a great speller. But that's okay. God invented spell exactly. check and it was wonderful. Yeah. But um, <laughs> even before that, okay, my son comes along and he is not a good speller. But hmm. praise God, he had a mama who was not a good speller either. And he was so discouraged by that. Okay, I told him, Stephen, <laughs> it's a very uncreative person who can only spell a word one way. Okay, that might not be the best advice. But he knew that his mom struggled with spelling when she was younger. And now she wrote books. So don't get discouraged if there's an area that you're teaching your child and they're just not getting it. Um, You know, God can do amazing things when we give all of our struggles to him. But going back to those struggles, you know, they're training us for something. We look at the story of Joseph. God was training him. And just remember that each time he was in those struggles, when he was sold into slavery, when he was in prison for something he didn't do, It says the Lord was with him. And no matter what we're going through, and no matter what our children are going through, the Lord is with them too, because Mm -hmm. that's what he's promised. And we know how that story ends, that um, the Pharaoh, there were two two fellows in prison. Meanwhile, let me just say that. Meanwhile, (laughs) there were two guys in prison with him. One was the Pharaoh's baker. One was the Pharaoh's wine tester. And they had Mm -hmm. dreams. They didn't know what they meant. Joseph, that the power of the Holy Spirit, interpreted those dreams that the baker would be hung and that the um, wine taster basically would be set free. And that is exactly Mm -hmm. what happened. And Joseph said, now, when you get out of here, you tell the Pharaoh about me because I didn't do anything wrong. You know, it Uh doesn't have exclamation marks or big capital letters in the Bible, (laughs) but I probably would have yelled that a little bit. And you know what, Peggy, it was two years after he got out. If I was with Mm -hmm. everyone right now, I'd get you to say it out loud. Two years. Two years later, the Pharaoh has that dream and no one Mm -hmm. can interpret it. And the, um, the fellow, the wine taster said, I know a guy. And then Joseph comes, interprets the dreams and seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Pharaoh makes him second in command and he saves the entire nation from starvation. But Mm -hmm. he had a long way to get there, didn't he? And we might have, we might have some struggles that we need to go through because, you know, God is so much more concerned about our character than our comfort. So we might yes. have through some so uncomfortable true. situations in order mm-hmm. to develop our character. So don't panic when it happens to you. Good words. Don't mm-hmm. panic when it happens to your child. And I know there's some times where something will happen and we think, I cannot believe my child did this. If you haven't said that already, you are going to say it. Just know yeah, you're going to. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I cannot believe my child did this. And you know what? Your first reaction is probably going to be after you get over getting mad at that child. You're probably going to feel guilty. Like, what did I do Mm. wrong to make my child make that decision? 
Hmm. And let me tell you, nothing. Yeah. You are responsible for t- developing that child and nurturing that child. But he still, God gave us the gift of choice. And yes. our children are still going to make bad decisions. Mm-hmm. And they're going to learn from those bad decisions. Yeah. Now, when somebody yeah. comes on this so podcast, true. and I don't want you to ever think, oh, these people have got it all together. And they know all the answers. Mm-hmm. And their children mm-hmm. never struggled. Listen. Listen, if our children had never struggled, we would not be on this podcast because right. that is how God <laughs> teaches us. Hey, can I get an amen, Peggy? Yep. Is that yeah, not true? Oh, absolutely. Amen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, that brings up a really good point, too, Sharon, is that a lot of people who are considering homeschooling, they look at somebody who's homeschooled, like I homeschooled for 19 years, and they're like, well, I can't be that person. The problem is, is they're looking at the person that has been through the trial. The person that has been formed by that trial, Mm -hmm. not the person who started out who had an anger issue that um, was like their son was ready to commit suicide at age five and Mm -hmm. and they were already depressed themselves. That's where I started out Mm -hmm. and where God has taken me through because of that journey that to persevering and saying, this is what you've called me to. I'm going to trust you. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel very like ill equipped for anything. but you'll be with me and when right. we'll, we'll walk through this together mm-hmm. and, um, and the amazing, amazing stories that we have to share, not because of what I did right, but because of what God did in the middle of what I Amen. was being obedient to follow through. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's just, I mean, it's, there's so many layers to the way God works in, in and through our stories. And Joseph's story, it was an amazing um, story to bring us to, Sharon, because um, we do. We feel like God's forgotten us, yes. that our circumstances are above and beyond anything that he could work through, and that our child is just a lost cause. At least that's what the world tells us. But God tells us something different, mm-hmm. and we all need to hear those stories mm-hmm. again and again and again as reminders mm-hmm. that um, this it hasn't changed. It's always been this way, right? Um, and I, almost every person that God used in the in the Bible had struggles. Oh, absolutely! I mean, you know, think yes. about Moses. <laughs> Moses, um, you know, when he called him, he had a stuttering problem. He couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even speak. I mean, this when right. you go through almost every one of them, them struggled. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, God, there's, I did not write this. I didn't make this up. I've heard it so many times that God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. Yeah. When we say yes to him, and every time you look through the Bible, when God did something miraculous, our obedience precedes that. So obedience, yes. our obedience, his power follows our obedience. Hmm. So we have to move first. And then that that power comes. And that's true whether we're talking about homeschooling or whatever he's called you to. That we start Absolutely. moving and then that power comes. We want it mm-hmm. the other way mm-hmm. around, though, don't we? We want to see yeah, somehow exactly. see that miracle <laughs> before we take that step. But that's that's, right. not, that's not how it happens. That, that's not you know, even Jerry Jericho law. You know, walk around the wall seven times and then seven times on the seventh time and the wall's gonna fall down. That is very odd. That is a very strange uh, um, battle attack to make the Jericho walls fall. But they had to take those steps and then God's power came. And that's the way it is in our own yeah. lives. We begin mm. to do what he's called us to do. But we got to make sure if this is what God's called me to do. And it's not just my idea. We should never ask God to bless our blueprint. Mm. So let me say that again. Yes. We should not ask God <laughs> to bless our blueprint or our plan. And speaking of Moses, that's Mm. exactly what happened with him when he was 40. He came up with a plan on his own. I'm going to save my people. And it failed. And he bailed 40 more years before God Mm -hmm. came to him again at that burning bush. So, yes, we were listening to God. And and sometimes you might wonder, well, I don't know if this is really God or if it's me or maybe it's Mm. the enemy. But I've decided that I'm going to always err on the side of obedience. Instead of Mm -hmm. analyzing out the kazoo, I am going to to err on the side of obedience and move forward because God knows your heart. He knows your heart. Yes. And that's what it really comes down to is your heart and Mm -hmm. and what are your intentions behind what you do. And 
Um, that'll divert you if you're, <laughs> your heart's in the wrong place. Um, but, but we do it with the best, you know, the best intentions and knowledge that we have, which aren't perfect. They're never going to be. We will continue this conversation after a short break. Audiences are raving. The carpenter is stunning. What caused the oven, Nazareth? My father sent me. He's a fighter. He's good, too. An unconventional parable as action-packed as it is faith-promoting. Fighting can be lucrative here with the right connections and talent. And easy to lose your way. The Carpenter is Christian filmmaking at its finest. You can't help but cheer. You have many gifts, many talents. If you work each day to refine them, you will accomplish more with God's help than without it. And how does it feel working with Yeshua every day? He's a carpenter, son of a carpenter. You are aware of his miracles. I hear stories. No, look further. A touching account of how Jesus can change us into the best we can be. Not like anyone I've ever known, so why help me? I'm nobody. You're somebody to me. The Carpenter, now in theaters. See the full trailer at carpentermovie.com. Check out some of our recent and upcoming episodes on the Salvation Army's Words of Life podcast. On September 15th, we launched a two-part series focusing on back to school and our kids' mental health with licensed therapist David Gray. But that takes away some of those other things that we may not think about, especially with younger kids, and that's that academic pressure. You know, a third grader who's not doing well in math may be sitting there thinking, I'm not good enough and I'm never going to be good enough. And beginning October 6th, we'll spend two weeks highlighting testimonies from young adult missionaries who just returned from summer missions trips. After prayer time, I had like kids individually like come up and like they would ask for prayer and like they told me like their stories and some of the struggles. Yeah, like I even cried like during it because like these kids, it was just this connection. It was incredible. So I was truly blessed through that. To learn more about the show, visit wordsoflifepodcast.org and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about prayer and how prayer can help us in this? you know, this area, as well as in so many areas. And as we approach trials and as we go through trials, um, how do we use that as a tool and um, and a way to just get closer to what God's doing um, and, and be able to just use that to help us walk the walk we've been called to? Mm-hmm. Well, again, all through the Bible, we see how God answers prayer and how miracles happen after someone has prayed, we see yeah. how Jesus actually prayed. The Son of God, think about that. He even mm-hmm. prayed. Um, but yeah. all through the Bible, we see that God um, answered someone and miracles happen when someone prayed. Mm-hmm. But sometimes for us, though, Peggy, I think we just don't know what to pray. You know, you don't with, with our kids. I mean, with our children, we might think. Well, I'm going to pray about this. I'm going to pray about this learning problem. I'm going to pray about this behavior. And we certainly could and should do that. But we can also just pray scripture over our children. And that's why I wrote the book, Praying for Your Child from head Mm -hmm. to toe. We're praying for their mind all the way down and what they think all the way down to their feet and the path they take. And we're praying scripture because sometimes we just don't know what to pray. But when you don't know what to pray, if you pray the word of God, you are praying Mm -hmm. the will of God. So that is so reassuring to me. And those areas that that I, I have another book for praying for your husband from head to toe. And it's really the same basic format, but praying scripture for 30 days, these certain scriptures over different areas, we're praying for mm. their mind and what they think about. And I start there mm. because that is so important because yes, you know, sometimes absolutely. we pray about behaviors, but you cannot act differently than you think. Amen. So we're so going to pray yeah. about their mind first and um, mm-hmm. that they will have their mind renewed. Not well, 
you know, great passage, great verse on that. Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed mm-hmm. by the renewing of your mind. So praying Absolutely. that over your children, because as a, mm-hmm. whether you're homeschooling or they're in public school or private school, they're going to see what's going on in the world. They're going to see yeah. it on social media. Mm-hmm. They're going to see it on the Internet. They're going to see it on television. They're going to hear about it on the playground. They're going to hear about it on a school. But I mean, they're going to hear it. They're going to see it. Yeah, exactly. So praying mm-hmm. about how they in, interpret that. Then mm-hmm. we're going to pray for their ears, what they listen to, their eyes, what yeah. they look at, their mouth, the words they speak, their neck. Mm-hmm. What, and the neck is what turns the head. So that's the decisions mm-hmm. that they make, shoulders, their burdens and worries, their back, their spiritual wow. protection, their heart, mm-hmm. who and what they love, their side, their friendships. Oh, that is so important, mm-hmm. isn't it? Who they walk Absolutely. through life with. We're going to pay, pray for their sexuality, that they celebrate the, the gender of their birth. We're going to pray for mm-hmm. their legs, to their stand um, on scripture and their feet, the path that they take. I left out one, the knees, how they humble yeah. themselves before the Lord. Oh, We're going yes. to pray for their arms, mm-hmm. their strength, their hands, what they end up doing with their lives, the work of their hands and the ring finger, their, their um, mm-hmm. spouse that they choose for the future. So, we can yeah. pray about all this with our own thoughts, but man, when we pray the scripture, when the scripture listed for 30 days for each one of those things, we are paying powerful prayer because I think um, scripture tells us that we have incredible power for those who believe. Mm. That's in Ephesians. Yes. Incredible power for those who believe. And that word power there is dunamis, is the Greek word dunamis. Mm. It's where we get dynamite. And you have to mm. make dynamite with nitrogen and glycerin. So I say that powerful prayer is praying and praying the scripture. And when you bring those together, you've got dynamos power, dynamite, mm. dynamite power. So prayer wow. is yeah. uh, just so important um, as we pray for our children, as we pray for this mm-hmm. world, as we pray for our Absolutely. culture, pray for our husbands. Um, mm-hmm. yes, power is just so key and prayer is so key to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and let me say this too: for mm-hmm. you moms that are, that are tired, anybody tired out there? I know you are. Oh, I think they all are. Yes, so it's, you know, when it's so easy. So when am I going to pray? Um, they're mm-hmm. often you don't have. Yes, we need to sit down in times of prayer, but the Bible says pray without ceasing. Also, yeah, and absolutely, that's just praying through your day. That's just mm-hmm. I mean, praying when you do the wash, praying when you're doing the. Um, washing the dishes, pr- you know, just praying throughout the day. There, it, 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 there is a time to sit and have a time of prayer, but we pray yeah. without ceasing just as we go through, through our days. Absolutely. Yes. I used to have lots of index cards with lots of scripture yeah. on the backs of doors, cabinets. Mm-hmm. When I opened the kitchen cabinets, they were there. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Just this constant reminder um, mm-hmm. because we do, we can get so caught up that we forget. And, um, and those were, that was before, I guess, cell phones had reminders on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and I, I think the most effective prayer, you know, the most effective yes. prayer is just help, help me Lord Jesus, yeah. just, just, you know, just help. So, you know, I, I don't mm-hmm. feel like you have to, to say that, just the right word. Sometimes you could get around people who were praying so eloquently. You think, mm. I don't know how to pray. But again, when you pray the word of God, as you're even going through your daily Bible reading, you know, praying those, those scriptures in. And, and, and Peggy, I just want to say too, when you go through and you read the New Testament, you read the gospels, we see just how much Jesus cared about mom's Absolutely. Jesus stopped yes. so many times for moms. Remember one mm. of the very first miracles that he performed, he was walking into town and going out of town was a funeral procession. Right. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And it was a widow whose only son had died. And honestly, you can't yeah. get much lower than that. I mean, especially mm-hmm. in that culture when widow did, that women didn't have hardly any way to, to take care of themselves and to make a living. Right. So she's mm-hmm. going out of town. Jesus sees this. He sees the funeral procession. She's crying. And Jesus walks up to this mama and he says, don't cry. He mm-hmm. had compassion on her. And he went over and raised her son from the dead mm-hmm. and gave him back to her. One of his first miracles. And then I love this story when he had been doing miracles. And then he and his disciples got in a boat and they went over to a place called Syrophoenicia. Mm-hmm. And this is a Gentile area. And this woman, this mother, 
came up to him and, he, yep. and she said, you know, my daughter, my daughter is possessed by demons. Can you please heal or drive these demons out? And um, mm. Jesus said, now this can be a little confusing if you're reading this and it makes it sound like Jesus is being harsh, but he's not. Mm. And he says, well, you know, I didn't come for the Gentiles. I came for the mm-hmm. Israelites, for the Hebrews. And she said, yes, but even the dogs get the scraps under their master's table. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus says, basically, he says, uh, and this is not word for word, but woman, your faith is really something. And yeah. so he was showing the disciples were listening to all this. They were trying to get her to go away, but they got to hear her incredible faith. You know who else got to hear it? The right. woman got to hear it as it came out of her mouth. Yeah. So um, he healed that woman's daughter, drove the demons out. And then you know what he did? He left. That's the only mm-hmm. thing we know that happened. That's the only thing that he did there. Yeah. That's yeah. The only thing. Exactly. So does that mean that Jesus loves moms enough that he would go all the way to a different city, a different town to take care of one mother who was struggling? And the answer mm. is yes. He did that for her and then he left. So that is yeah. so encouraging to me as I think mm. about when you're saying, God, are you hearing me? Do you even care what's going on? Oh, yes, right. he hears you and mm-hmm. he's here. But I always remember the meanwhile word, even though we can't see it, God is working in the background in ways that we could never so see. So true. Yeah. Yeah. We had a comment from one of our viewers. Um, she said, good topic here. Good reminder. When this is going on over here, something else is going on over there. I really mm-hmm. needed to hear that today. Um, good. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we, we get so focused in on what's going on in our life. And we think nobody else is doing with this. It's just me. Um, I'm all alone. And, you know, I see how everybody else's lives are perfect on Facebook or wherever else I'm, I'm watching. And mine's just miserable. So um, and mm-hmm. we can get that idea. But the problem is, is... The majority of us are all dealing with all this stuff. Um, And um, we we can either say, woe is me and kind of close in, or we can reach out to God. And like you said, Sharon, we can, we can wait on him and Mm -hmm. wait on what he's working out because Mm -hmm. it's so much bigger, so much better than Mm -hmm. we could ever imagine, but we can't lose hope. Um, You know, the holidays are, yeah, the holidays are coming up. And it's a really, really hard season. I remember times um, in our family, even growing up, I had my youngest brother was the most difficult to manage um, before I had 10 adopted siblings that was added to that mix. Um, But (laughs) my one birth brother, um, he people would say when we were coming, are you bringing him? (laughs) you know my poor mother I she just laughed it off but people are serious and unfortunately a lot of times the the extra work that we bring with as a family sometimes makes it to the point where we don't get invited or the holidays just aren't a a lovely happy time Mm -hmm. because they aren't what we pictured they would be Mm -hmm. um and so a lot of our parents just kind of close in more so than um, feel like it's a celebration. Um, so do you have any advice for parents on finding joy and thankfulness amidst mm-hmm. maybe these unmet expectations that mm-hmm. they have of these times and, you know, other times throughout the year as well? Mm-hmm. Well, I want to go back to something you said right before describing that situation is the whole idea of social media and the internet. And when you are looking at social media, we always have to remember, and, and, you know, I say this to myself, but it's so hard. I have to remember that this is someone's highlight reel. This Mm -hmm. is not their everyday life because we don't post everyday life. We're only showing the good parts. We're not seeing how, their son got in trouble at school or how their, their daughter got caught sneaking off and Mm -hmm. the fight that mom and dad had last night. I mean, we're not showing any of that. So we look at these highlights and during the holidays, we look at the highlights 
we look at Christmas cards and listen, don't even get, I don't know if people do this much anymore. I quit doing it, but people would send Christmas letters and in the Christmas letter, it's just a highlight. Some of the old family members still do that. (laughs) I'm like, don't, just don't do it, you know, but it has all the highlights of everything that happened that year. We don't have to do it anymore because the people are posting every single day about something that wonderful (laughs) that happened, but that is not real life. And I promise Mm. you that is not their real life. So yeah. I will tell you that comparison kills contentment. Hmm. Comparison kills contentment. So and we, when we compare ourselves, what we have going on on the inside, what somebody else is posting on the outside, we are going to be very discouraged. And we've talked a little bit about loneliness, not a whole lot yet, but hmm. you know, moms are so lonely today. And especially yeah. if you're homeschooling mom and you're not getting out as much with other mm-hmm. moms, then they look at these posts on Facebook and Instagram and they see all these people together. And, then, mm-hmm. and you know, I think it's hilarious that it was called social media because right. social, <laughs> it makes you feel unsocial mm-hmm. because you feel like I'm not doing that. I'm not having any fun. And it's right. really not social media all and it's making people feel lonely and teenagers yeah. and once they get that they start comparing themselves you know when we were growing mm-hmm. up we compared before we had the internet and cell phones and internet um oh, instagram yeah. i mean we compared ourselves to people at school or people in the neighborhood or people we knew now they're comparing right. themselves to people all around the world and people they don't even know and it's just right. making everyone feel lonely and feeling mm-hmm. like they're not good enough and yes. that is such a tool yeah. of the enemy. I think that mm. feeling yeah. of comparison, com- and listen, comparison kills calling. That's another thing I tell people often. Comparison oh, kills so calling. Yeah. And the measuring stick will get you stuck. So mm. as a mom, as a homeschooling mom, if you are as a mom going into the holidays, if you are measuring yourself by what you think someone else is doing, then you're mm-hmm. going to get stuck there. So we need to make yeah. sure not to compare ourselves with others. So what do you do if you're if you're going into a holiday season and you know there's going to be drama from certain family members? I think one mm-hmm. idea is telling your children age appropriate things that might occur. So let's mm-hmm. say that Uncle Bobby has a really bad temper and he gets mad a lot. Well, tell him. You know, sometimes Uncle Bobby has a bad temper. And um, he he might struggle with that. So we need to know that might happen. Or if we know somebody's not a Christian and they have really Mm -hmm. bad behavior and say, you know, they don't know, they don't know Jesus yet. And, you know, appropriate Mm -hmm. behavior as they get older, explaining more, letting them know, you know, what they might see when Mm -hmm. they're there and how we can, can pray for them. Um, So that's something to know going in the holidays. But I, but I do think that um, lowering your expectations of what the holidays might look like, um, it might look yeah. like um, that is um, is an important thing to do for all of us. And then if it exceeds our mm-hmm. expectations, isn't that great? So right. just make sure that they're not <laughs> right. you know, they're not too high and lowering our expectations and and keeping mm-hmm. in mind what it's all about in the first place. Exactly. Actually, that's so true. Yeah, um, one of the first yeah. books I ever wrote, which is now out of out of print now, is um celebrating a Christ center Christmas. And mm. that was really had a focus uh, on the reason that we're celebrating Christmas and not getting stressed out about all the, what the culture you know, tells us that it should look like, you know, and right. be like. so um, I actually yeah. have a list of some ways to, to celebrate a Christ center Christmas um, as a freebie on my, my website that they can, oh, can awesome. download. But um. But yeah, that's so. And the reason that is so important to me, Peggy, is because in my home, you know, I mentioned growing up in a difficult home environment where my yeah. parents fought a lot. It was always worse around the holidays. Hmm. It's always worse around Christmas. The stress goes up, and and yeah, so much Stre- comes up. Stress yeah. comes up. My mom. Um, even though they had a very difficult marriage, we looked good on the outside, lived in a nice neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, we just looked like we were a typical American family. And she worked very hard at making that look the case. But we were mm-hmm. not um, we were not happy. And Christmas was awful at my house. So mm-hmm. when I um, had a child, I wanted to make sure that we did focus on the right thing. 
And we did things, right. for example, he only got three presents all the way through. Mm-hmm. He still he still gets he's an adult now and he still gets three presents. Um but that's because <laughs> Jesus, Jesus got three presents. So why should we get right. more? Right. And um <laughs> so I mean we did lots of things to keep keep Christ the focus of the holiday and that mm-hmm. made it smaller than what yeah. the world expects you to do. I mean you think about oh, yeah. the stores stores right now and it's October when we're recording this and um, right. Christmas stuff's already out. So yeah, oh, it it's is. not a retail holiday. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a celebrating Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's th- that's such a good point. One of my co-hosts is just launching a new celebrating Jesus at Christmas time book. Mm-hmm. And so she'll be on the show later and we're going to talk about how to throw Jesus a birthday party. Um, mm-hmm. So, so that's coming up. Um, but yeah, it, we, we do, we get off track of what the importance should be. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, even family can be overwhelming, like you said. And, and again, the holidays aren't about, about family. Yes, it's great to celebrate with family, but even without family, we have Jesus, who is the most important family member, and we can celebrate him. Um, And it's just, it's, it's, refocusing our attention on what we should be focused on instead of focusing on all the things that we either don't have that we wish we had that, you know, the the long laundry Mm -hmm. list that just kind of digs that hole for us. Mm -hmm. Of um, It it isolates us and it also brings us away from that joy that we're supposed to be having in that season Mm -hmm. and in our Lord. Um, you know, can, can I say this, Peggy, too? I, yeah. I've mentioned twice here um, about my difficult childhood. And I know there are people listening who've had difficult childhoods as well. And yeah. um, I hope that's not the story, but I don't know. It just seems like that we always tend to bring the, the negative from our childhood into our adulthood. Yeah. And we're afraid it's going to affect yeah. our parenting. But, um, you know, I became a Christian at 14. Um, and let me tell you how that happened, though. When I was with all the difficulty that went on in my family, there was a woman in my neighborhood. Her name was Mrs. Henderson. It was my best friend's mom, lived on the next block. And I began to spend a lot of time down at the Henderson's home. And mm-hmm. she began to tell me about um, about Jesus. And I thought she was a little strange because she would walk around the house singing little praise songs. And she talked about <laughs> Jesus like she knew him personally. And I thought that was very <laughs> odd. Because you see, my family, as bad as we were, and so much went on behind that door, um, we went to church on Sunday. And just mm-hmm. because someone goes to church on Sunday does not mean that they're hearing the word or that they know that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. But I've mm-hmm. spent uh, two years with her, her mentoring me. Uh, she started Bible mm-hmm. study in the neighborhood for teenagers. And at 14, she sat me down one night and asked me um, if I wanted to ask Jesus in my heart. And I told her, yes. Mm-hmm. And he did change my life, but I had to get back home into that, that violent environment with all the negativity. Mm. And I'm going to tell you this really, really quickly. But three years later, I had a chance to go out of the country for the summer as a foreign exchange student. And while I was mm. gone, I told my mom, if something happens, you need to go down to Mrs. Henderson's house. Because you see, at the time, I was breaking up the fights. Mm. I left for the wow. summer. My dad came home, started a fight. My mom went to Mrs. Henderson's. And then she gave her life to Christ that night. So that wow. was an amazing summer. And then my father said, you know, I'm going to go to church with you, but I could never become a Christian because there's too yeah. many things I've done in my life. God could never forgive me. And of yeah. course, I told him exactly what you would tell him, Peggy, that none of us yeah. could be good enough because if we could, right. then Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. Right. But exactly. it took him about three more years after that. Um, he mm-hmm. was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. He was being sued. And uh, my mom was in Pennsylvania wow. from North Carolina. He drove mm-hmm. to try to find her, couldn't find her, stopped at a church, said, and that's the one to pray mm-hmm. for me. And the, the lady said, the priest isn't here, but I'll draw you a map of a Baptist pastor out in the woods building his church. <laughs> my dad followed that little map on a scrap piece of paper, wow. pulled up to this church and told the man with a hammer in his hand, I need you to pray for me. He said, Tell me what the problem is. And my dad told him everything he'd ever done. And then that pastor said, now, Alan, let me tell you what I've done. And the way my dad described it, he said, Sharon, everything I had done in my life, that man had done too. So I knew that if God could forgive him and he could be a preacher, that he could forgive me. Wow. And listen, Peggy, that's so powerful 
for us um, yeah. because we go through struggles. Our children are going to go through struggles mm-hmm. and see God can use everything we've gone through, just like with that pastor yeah. to help lead someone yeah. else to the Lord. And we show what God has done in our life. Then it says God comforts us so that we can comfort others with the comfort exactly. we've been received from God. So as your kids are struggling, you know what? This is going to be part of their story. This is going yeah. to be part of your story and how you're going to be helped somebody else. Just like Peggy, think about it. Hmm. What'd you say? It's been how many years since she started? 19 years since she started? Oh, well, school? yeah, 19. And I've graduated them all a couple of years ago. So okay. that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> what, is, what are you doing right now? You're helping other moms, telling them about the struggles yeah. Because of what you've learned. So, Mama, as you are struggling now, listen, know that God is going to use everything you are going through to help somebody Absolutely. else. But we have to be willing to do that. See, my dad even, so he went to church for those three years, but he didn't see anybody like him. Nobody was sharing their struggle. And were there mm. people like him? Yes. But they were just keeping it to themselves. God had to take him from North Carolina okay. to Pennsylvania to meet a man who was willing to tell his story. So I want to encourage you as you were going through these struggles, as you get through these struggles and on the other side of the struggles, just know God is going to use your story to help someone else. God is going to use your children's struggle that they can help someone else. Just like I told you the story about my spelling Mm -hmm. and now I write books. God's going to use everything your child's going through too. Yeah. Oh, such good encouragement. That is so good. Because we do, we, we struggle with what, what's, what if, what, you know, um, what if we stay stuck in this? What if my child stays stuck in this? What about our future? And, um, and it does, it keeps us, it keeps us stuck. Unfortunately, God has a plan. And like you said, so many times, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, and we need to um, strike yeah. what if out of our vocabulary. I really think right. just- And I did not make this up. I can't remember who did, but worry is a down payment on a problem you may never have. So Mm -hmm. just strike Mm -hmm. that what if from, from, it's not helpful for any of us. Right. Yeah. I I think we, we feel like we have to, to like wrestle with that because I'm not being responsible if I don't, you know, plan enough or, you know, it doesn't mean that you don't do certain things, but it also doesn't mean you go beyond those either. Um, you know, and, and trying to find that balance in that and, and trusting that God's going to do that. It's not all up to you. It's really not all up. You do the best you can and, Mm -hmm. um, God's working, God's working. And I thought this will encourage someone, but one of my first books, um, it was about 20 years ago, um, was called Being a Great Mom, Raising Great Kids. It was with, with Moody Press. I think it was longer than that. Mm-hmm. But um, my son was in middle school, and he was a great kid. He was so easy. He just was. And I wrote this book, Being a Great Mom, Raising Great Kids. And back then, we had to type it out and mail it in. So yeah. I <laughs> mailed that manuscript out, and I went home so excited about it, dropped it in the mailbox, my phone was ringing and it was Stephen. And he said, mom, this is Stephen. I am in the principal's office. I just got caught stealing in the lunchroom. Great. (laughs) So I go to the school and I walk in the office and see this child sitting in, in a chair with my son's clothes on thinking this cannot be him. Well, he got in school suspension for five days and then I went home and I called the publisher and I told them what happened to give them an out. And um, the vice president said, welcome to the real world. Right. And the book (laughs) was published. Now, Stephen is a fine young man. He's a a grown up now. And um, but that see, I needed to learn how to hit a wall and Mm. climb over it and get on the other side. I needed to learn how to struggle with something like that. Mm. And you might think, you know, you you maybe think I'm doing a great job. And then all of a sudden something like that happens and you think I am doing an awful job. Listen, it's not about where you're doing a great job or an awful job. You know, I was still a great mom and Stephen was still a great kid, but there had things like that are going to happen, especially when they they move into those adolescent years. And, um, Mm -hmm. and the good news, he turned out to be a, 
one man. So, but um, know that things like that will happen. Don't let it ruin you. Don't let it mm-hmm. discourage you to the point of, of being stuck. Yeah. Um, just know that the person who wrote being a great mom had raising great kids had <laughs> that kind of struggle. And uh, we just kept putting the next foot forward to doing the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. We live in such an if then society, you know, if I do this, then this happens, you know, and it, we think it's so scientific. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <probably not. laughs> no, no. <laughs> There's so many things that, that come in the middle and, and I love how much you've shared your story over this last hour, Sharon, you know, and it, it is God working. God wants to bring himself glory and he's going to do it and he's going to do it with our help or, you know, with him, us by his side or without, Um, you know, the, the privilege we have is that God wants us to be part of that story. He mm-hmm. wants us to be used to be part of his story. Um, just like the man who talked to your father, just, you know, yes. like mm-hmm. so many places in your life. And I've seen it happen in my life too, is, you know, we're obedient. We walk through it. We don't know why we, mm-hmm. we can, you know, maybe we do, maybe we don't, like you said, we may be on this side of heaven. We, we will never see the answer to a lot of things we've prayed for. But in the end, God is always faithful and always good. Mm-hmm. And um, and if we take the time to reflect and to to slow down enough to to see what God's doing, um, we're going to have a lot more easier time resting in mm-hmm. these unknown places, these places of trials. And it might be years before you see yeah. anything. Uh, uh, one thing with me is we after we had Stephen we were trying for baby number two and Mm. um, went through years of infertility treatment and it it did not happen and then we got pregnant later and the baby died before she was born and that Mm. was devastating for someone who loved children and wanted to have a house Mm. full but I remember when I was um, Stephen was 16 and he was six feet long and he was asleep on his bed and he had a hairy leg hanging off and drool coming down his face (laughs) oh I love that kid Lord I love that boy so much and why is there only one and Mm. and, um, then um, John three sixteen just watched over me and it said, for uh, God so loved the world. He gave his what only son, whoever mm. believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I said, Lord, yeah. is that it? And then it washed over me again. And I saw at that moment when I was going through that struggle, one of the mm. things the devil was telling me is God does not love you because oh. he is not answering your prayer. And you've gone mm. through struggle. God does not love you. But God mm. was showing me right there, I love you so much that mm. I gave you a walking example of how much I do love you. Because right. there's nobody I love enough to give my only son. But mm. God loved me enough to give me his only son. So yeah. pray that, that God will show you uh, mm. lessons from these dark times that we that we go through. Absolutely. Yes. And he will. I mean, he's so faithful. Um, I remember some dark times walking through it and I'm like, okay, God, I know, I know you're here. I don't see you. I don't feel you, but I'm, I, and I have nowhere else to go. So <laughs> here I am. That's what um, faith is, right? I mean, and, that's what and that's, is. that's, it grows your faith though, too, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you, you have to step out into that unknown without mm-hmm. anything to hold on to. Right. Um, and we always want something else, like a backup plan. And mm-hmm. God doesn't, give us that right. so, <laughs> we're his one and only plan yeah things take longer than we think they will or they take longer Absolutely. than we hope they will you know with their kids i think of the way um that the chinese grow bamboo so they grow bamboo they plant the seeds and then they water it nothing happens for a year second year they water it third year water it fourth year water it nothing happens and then on the fifth year that bamboo grows 90 feet in six weeks. So here's wow. the question. Did it grow 90 feet in six weeks or mm. did it grow 90 feet in five years during those five years where they didn't see anything happen and then grow? Right. So what a great picture for us as we think mm. about raising and investing in our children and pouring into our children you know, it's like that bamboo. We we water, we keep watering, we keep fertilizing. We might not see anything, but one day 
you know, yeah. we're going to see a result. So just don't give up. Don't give up. Absolutely. Before we close, can you pray for our community and those listening? I would really love that. Okay. Lord, I thank you so much that we could come together and share this time um, through the, the miracle of the internet. Um, I thank you for these mothers that have made a decision to to um, homeschool their kids and to pour into their children. I thank you that they see the importance of um, being a person who to pours in their kids to make impact. We thank you, Lord, that you have entrusted us moms, not with just a child, but with an eternal soul. We pray for wisdom, that you will give us wisdom to help know how to raise each one. It says train up a child in the way that he should go, that she should go. Um, so show us what that way is for each individual person. I pray that these moms listening will be encouraged to know how much you love them how you were one of the main focuses that Jesus took time out for his, for the moms, even his own mom. One of the last words he said on the cross was geared towards someone taking care of his mother when he was gone. Lord, I thank you for each one of them. I pray that you just fill them up as they pour out in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And you're welcome. Uh, put up uh, your website. It's um, SharonJanes.com. And we'll have that in the show notes too. But you've got lots of resources on your website. Um, can you share a little bit about what people will find on your site? Okay. Well, I have a, a weekly devotion that goes out on Tuesday so they can sign up for that. And there's a, a freebie you get when you sign up on 75 Common Lies We Believe and the Truth mm -hmm. That Replaces Them. Um, today, we've awesome. kind of been talking um, two books that I have this um, praying for your child from head to toe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a 30 day guide. And then the mama moments with God. And yes, I'm so, I, that not having one. a lot of time. These are 90 <laughs> devotions. And you know what? It'll take you about five minutes, maybe to read mm -hmm. a devotion that has a scripture and a prayer. So that's yeah. uh, for busy, busy moms, but lots of other resources on there that are not geared just toward moms. Actually, most of them are not geared just toward moms. Um, so I mentioned the feeling of not being good enough. There's a book called enough silence and the lies that steal your confidence. Mm. Um, and there's a, a freebie. There's a, a free resource, a page that you has all kinds of things you can print out. But one of them is, um, lies that teachers believe and oh no here we go yeah. it's um, praying for your teacher from head to toe that's the one so mm -hmm. um and it's praying scripture over teachers and listen you're the teacher right so you print right. that out and you pray it for yourself um, mm, that's so, so good all kinds of free resources <laughs> on there yeah, that's awesome. So definitely check that out and the, the resources that Sharon has and um, her books. I uh, Her publisher sent me the one devotional and it has been so good. Even though I, I don't have any of the young kids at home still, it has blessed me greatly. <laughs> and so, um, so yes, definitely um, look into those resources. And um, thank you so much, Sharon, You're just welcome. for sharing You're time welcome. with us today and, um, and your heart. Um, just your heart for the Lord and your heart for, for moms and, um, and just sharing hope with us. It's, we need it so much. You're welcome. Yeah. So um, next week on the show, we are going to talk about happy mothering, embracing God's love and navigating the chaos of your calling. Um, so we're, we're back on to uh, motherhood just uh, for another show, um, but um, it must be because you all need it. So <laughs> it's that, that season. So um, so definitely join us again for, for that episode next week. And until then, everyone, thanks for joining us and have a great week and God God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. <laughs>take just a second to thank the team at life audio for their partnership with us on this podcast if you go to lifeaudio.com you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network they've got shows about prayer bible study parenting and more this has been empowering homeschool conversations i found myself on a ledge three stories high at some condominiums contemplating my life and struggling to 
understand my purpose. Have you ever found yourself on the ledge? My name is Billy Yant. I'm a caring father, mentor, and friend. In my new podcast, Billy and the Goat, I share the life-changing events that shaped who I am today to remind you that no matter how far you've fallen, God can help you get up and thrive. Listen now at lifeaudio.com.